Hi everyone and welcome to your TX RV Adventures instructional video. I'm Brittany and I have behind the camera today Lauren who's going to be filming us go over this 2021 Mercedes Sprinter. We're going to start on the driver's side which is where all the hookups are going to be at. This is some of the first things you'll want to do when you arrive at your campground or if you're going to be dry camping, you'll want to hook everything up. You've got a lot of storage on the side of the camper here. In this large storage compartment is where all these hoses are going to be located. I've pulled them out so that we can show you where they connect onto the motorhome. But this is a large storage space, perfect for barbecue grills, uh, maybe a case of water. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to the electric. This is a 30 amp RV with one single AC on the roof. That means it's going to take 30 amps. If you need any adapters, um, if you're going to a camp space that has maybe 50, just let us know and we do have adapters available. So you're going to take one end, screw it into the RV here. And then the other end where the 30 amp plug is looks like this. You're going to plug this into the RV. Uh, campsite. And once you plug it into the campsite, go ahead and flip the breaker on at the post or wherever you're going to be at. Make sure that breaker's on. Once you do that, power will start coming into the coach. Okay. Now that breaker can trip at any point in time. So make sure you keep an eye on that breaker. If you don't see power coming into the RV, you'll know that you have power coming into the RV. There will be power to the microwave and that's a sign you'll know that you have power. Okay. Just above that here, is a coax cable and that coax cable is for the uh, park side so if you want to bring a coax to put into here there is a digital antenna on the roof if you want to go ahead and use the parks you'll need to bring about a 20 foot coax cable next we'll go over water one side is going to have a pressure regulator this is the side that connects to the rv park fixture and then our side here is going to screw in where it says city water connection. You're just going to connect this here. And once you turn the faucet on, water is going to flow into the RV. This isn't going to fill the holding tank. This is just going to what you need at the time. It's what you're going to use coming in from the fixture. So anytime you flush the toilet, open the handles, this water is just going to flow in. On the other side of the RV is going to be a small hole where we fill the water. And we'll show you that when we get on the other side. So that's for your holding tank for while you're driving. So this is when you're stationary in park, and the other side is for when you're going to be driving. Okay. Underneath here, another really big storage compartment. Okay. This is likely where your septic hose is going to be stored somewhere separate from everything else. Next thing we're going to do is go down to where the septic is. Perfect. And you're going to have a black and a gray. Okay. The black is going to be for your sewer and your gray is going to be for your sinks and your shower water. One end is going to look just like this. And this is the side that's going to lock onto this cap. You're going to take this off and then give it a quarter of a turn locking this onto our pipe. And then the other side is going to look like this. And this goes into the PVC hole in the ground or at a dump station. Once both of them are connected, you're able to pull out on these valves and that will release whatever is in each side of the tank. Okay. So the silver here, this is going to be your gray. Again, this is safe to leave open while you're connected at a site. And that way, no water will overflow in the shower area. It'll just slowly drain out. Now, the black side to the left over here, that is for septic. We want to make sure that's totally full before we do any kind of dumping. The more pressure um, that we have gives it a better flush. And we don't have any toilet paper sticking to the side of the walls. And it'll give the time that the toilet paper needs to break down. This is rapid dissolving toilet paper, which we do provide in there. So uh, we want to make sure that you use that and it gives it time to dissolve. Now there is two handles. 
one handle for the black here and then we will show you on the other side there's another handle um, a second handle for the black as well they want you to pull both to make sure you are totally ready to dump the septic okay the important stuff now never open them at the same time one at a time and the night before you are ready to leave the campsite you're going to close both stay connected take your final showers use the restroom and then the next morning go ahead and dump the black first through your hose and then wash the hose out with some soapy water okay um, and then we'll teach you on the inside how to refill the black tank with a little bit more water and soap so that way while you're driving the chemicals that are in there swish around we do put chemicals in before you pick up so you'll already have a good base now we'll show you where the second handle is it's located in the rear of the rv it's really hard to see it's kind of you kind of got to go underneath in the far back of the coach here I'll show you where that is so if you happen to forget your second stage handle is, you see that? Do you see it, Lauren? Are you able to get it? Yeah. Let me find it right here. All right, see where my hand oh, is, y'all? Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is the second handle. And if you don't open this handle, nothing's going to come out of the black tank. So this handle is very sneaky, hard to find, but this is where it's at. Okay? Perfect. Okay, where to next, Lauren? We are on to the propane. Okay, great. So we're going to talk about propane. These small sprinters use a lot of propane, okay? They use propane for the hot water heater. They use it for the furnace. They're going to use it for the cooktop. Most importantly, you're going to be running the generator on it. So you want to make sure that you have a lot of propane at all times in this coach if you're going to be running the generator. So during the hottest part of the summer, really make sure that you have a lot um, and you know before you're going to boondock anywhere. Always be sure that this is to the right, making sure that it's totally open. Excuse me, let me see. Left. Just kidding. I want to go left this way. So making sure this is all the way open. That way your refrigerator will stay on and cool while you're driving. You can power on the generator while you're in motion using this tank. This is the truest gauge read to how much is in this propane tank. You can go ahead and refill this before bringing it back to us. If you need to top it off at any point during your trip, you're going to go ahead and go to a truck stop or possibly a U-Haul. Some really nice campgrounds have it as well. Now the fuel size of this tank, let me get you a read on it. It is 16 gallons. Okay, so 16 gallons. So this is a smaller tank okay um typically if you're going to be dry camping two three days running on the generator tops so um, you really want to keep an eye on this make sure you don't you know die in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you got no, no ac so make sure you keep a, a close eye every day be checking this okay perfect next we're going to go over to the generator um so on our way there we have the exterior hot water heater here, an outside shower. Okay, there's a key to this and you can have a rinse all of your stuff off. On our way to the generator, we're just gonna go over some other quick things here. This is spare generator oil. We have some leveling blocks and your spare def. So we're gonna go over fuel and def just after the generator, but this is where some of those oils are gonna be located. So you want to always make sure that you check the generator while it is cooled down and totally level. Taking the cover off like this. Anytime you know you're going to be using the generator for a few hours, maybe five to ten hours or even overnight, check the oil level. Um, the higher altitude in the summer, things like that, you're going to need to make sure that you have enough oil because it burns a lot. So this is where you check the oil going to remove the dipstick it's nice and cold right now you can see it's pretty clear but it does show where it has a fill and an add line and if it needs to fill in any way maybe about um, two or three tablespoons worth just to top it off 
um, it will be topped off when you pick it up. But if you're on a two week trip, it's, it's important to check the maintenance on it. Okay, there is no altitude adjustment in the propane. Um, so this one, the only thing we're gonna be looking at here is the start and stop. Okay, so you've got stop button and start, as well as this starts and stops on the inside of the RV. That's where we recommend doing it. And then right here, there's a little arrow and it'll show right where my finger is, there's a breaker here. Okay, so that breaker is for the power. So if this generator does kick on and you're hearing it, but you're not seeing any power come from it, like your ACs aren't working or your power outlets and televisions, you need to make sure you come outside here and check that breaker because it can it can trip with um, too much load on it. And then the exhaust. So exhaust is to the right here at the bottom. When this thing is on, it's really windy. You're boondocking. Uh, make sure you're facing away from the wind because we'll have wind back into the pipe here and it'll set off your carbon monoxide detector. The best way to stop that, turn off the generator, turn the coach around and rotate it, okay, and away from the wind. Be sure to always, always put the cover back on. Don't leave it behind. <laughs> Here. And like I said, this is a propane generator, so make sure you are full on propane. All right. And next, we're going to go to the DEF and filling the fuel. Okay. So this box is going to come standard with all of our sprinters. It is a spare box. So unless you need it, don't use it. Um, if you get stranded somewhere and you absolutely do need it, go ahead and grab it. Um, and either replace it or we'll replace it for you, but it's a spare one for you there. All right. Opening the door here, we've got fuel. Okay, so this is your diesel, and they have that anti-siphoning, so you have to open the door in order to get to it. Okay. We're going to pop the hood, um, and I'll show you where that is right here. Right there. That's the hood latch. And this is where we put the DEF. Now the DEF is really important. It's for the emissions of the vehicle. Um, it's for the diesel. So they mix themselves um, in the engine. Okay, you don't mix or do any <laughs> do anything. All you need to do is make sure it's full and this is where it's at. So you'll pop the hood and fill this. Two to three boxes fills this whole thing. It'll come full when you pick it up uh, for your reservation. And then it'll also show you on the gauge how much fuel is in the tank and how much DEF levels are in the tank. So there's really no guessing. The Mercedes tells you. <laughs> All right. Um, everything under the hood is just windshield wiper fluid down below right here on the right. If you're on a really long trip, you may need to fill that as well. But we'll check all the fluids before you uh, pick up. All right. Let's go around to the other side. Going to the back, we're going to get the um, tow capacity on this coach because we do have a tow hitch here. Okay, and what is that, Lauren? What's the tow on that? 5,000 pounds. Okay, so 5,000 pounds. We allow towing on the vehicles. There is a fee to tow. We don't provide any tow equipment. You would need to get your tow dollies or any sort of hookups that you need, but we do do bike racks. You can either bring your own or rent one from us. That is totally fine. Or luggage racks right here. Okay. Up at the top, you have a backup camera. This will display while you're driving, as well as when you put the vehicle into reverse, and it'll help you back up the RV. We have a ladder here. There's nothing up there, just maintenance, okay? So we ask that you don't go up onto the ladder. Um, there's, it's very slippery. The ACs produce a lot of condensation in the summer, which makes the roof really wet, okay? So we ask. Next, we're gonna go over the stabilizing jacks. In this specific Sprinter, these are electric, but in some models, you will have to use a hand crank or a drill that'll be inserted right here and you just twist it okay to make them raise and lower now because these are stabilizing it'll just stop the motion but it won't level out the coach completely that's what the leveling blocks are for this is just going to stabilize now we do put a spare one of these in the rv in case something were to go wrong you do have a jack here okay perfect 
So we're going to go and look at the front. As you can see, there's a really large awning that pretty much covers the whole passenger side here of the RV. And there's a switch on the inside for that. Uh, so we recommend that if you're not with the RV or at night that you bring it in, if there's any sort of wind, these things do not have a wind sensor, so they will come off. So we wanna make sure that we keep it in, keep an eye on the awning. You've got a light strip here. There is a switch inside as well. The, the light switch is right at the door and you'll be able to still use the lights even with the awning in. Little bit of storage here on this side. These are all lockable. We have a quick connect for a barbecue grill. If you happen to have a barbecue grill that has a quick connect, we do rent barbecue grills um, that do have a propane tank. Exterior, outside power outlets. These are GFCI protected. These are wet outlets. So there is a reset button in the bathroom. We'll show you where that is when we do the inside. You've got your back of your refrigerator as well as your furnace here. Okay, so there's nothing here. This is really just for maintenance. This is gonna be hot when the furnace is on. And this is where you fill your fresh water before you leave. This is your holding tank so that you can use the restroom while in travel. This is going to be full when you pick it up for your reservation. And we know that the uh, when we stick the hose inside here, there's a gauge on the inside. And it'll tell you how much water you have and how much you need to put in. But when you stick that hose in there, you're going to see that water will shoot out at you. <laughs> and uh, this is totally normal. It's fine. When the water shoots out at you, you know you're done. Put the cap on. You're done. You're ready to go. <laughs> Big storage here. We do provide camp chairs with all of our uh, rentals for as many people as it sleeps. Okay. So you've got camp chairs in here. You don't need to bring any of that. And then this is extra storage as well. Okay, your step here, this is electric, and when the engine comes on, when you turn the engine on to the vehicle, this will automatically come in, okay? So uh, don't worry about it trying to stay out while you're, when you start driving away, it is going to come in. It's all electric, it knows it's a safety feature. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna talk about the fuel size of the engine, okay? Um, this is a small tank, it's only 26 gallons. So small tank, small motor home. So you may be making more stops, um, which is fine. Give you some time to stretch your legs. Right? <laughs> a lot. This is, this is a great motor home for high mileage, long trips because they are very comfortable to drive. Um, really, they, they handle really well, tight steering. They are, they're great. Next, we've got an easy tag here in the window. Okay, so while you're driving on Beltway 899 in here in Texas, just keep going, don't stop, okay? Tolls are included with your rental. However, if you do leave the state, you go on a turnpike, uh, you go through any tolls or bridges, you will need to stop and pay for those separately. Now we'll go ahead and talk about tires here. You'll see each one of the six tires is gonna have a monitor just like this. And that's gonna tell you how much pressure is in each of the tires. Okay. And that's gonna be displayed on the dash. We'll show you where that is on the inside. And that way you can keep an eye on all of the tires, know if they're getting too full or you've lost some air in them. Okay. Next, we'll take a look at the inside of the motorhome. Now we're gonna go ahead and go over the main control panel to this RV, which is located just inside the door here. So once you've dropped the um, stabilizing jacks, then we're gonna slide out. First thing we're gonna do is just talk about the gauges on here before we go through the functions of how the RV slides out. So um, just from the start here, we've got all of your gauges. Tells you how much propane you have in your tank. How much battery you have your fresh water holding tank this is where you can tell how much uh, water needs to go in to the passenger side to make sure you can go and travel and flush the toilets black you usually want to see empty on that if you show full go ahead and dump it gray should always read empty if you are keeping that gray tank open 
Down below here, we have the water pump. When you turn this on, you'll get a red light here, and that's going to indicate that you can use the pump to flush the toilets while the vehicle's in motion, okay? or if you're boondocking. So just make sure that this is full before you turn on the pump, because you don't want to run the pump dry. Turn it off when you're not using it. You only want that on if you're not plugged into the city water connections. This button on the left here is your steps for your electric steps off and on. Okay, When they are in the off position, that means they will stay locked out. Anytime that you open and close this door, that won't try to come in and out as much. Um, but if you turn it on every time you open and close the door, there it's going to try to retract itself. Okay, Even if you have it in the off position, which is where I like to keep it, um, when you crank the engine, it is going to come up no matter if it's in the off position or in the on position. It will come back on. Okay, You have ceiling lights here. This is going to be for the ones just over uh, the living room. There are six lights in the top there. Okay, And this is extending and retracting of the slide out. Okay, So when you press and hold extend or press and hold retract that's going to allow this slide out to move you just press and hold and if i were to let go it will stop so if you hear any noises or you think something might be obstructing it just take your hands off it and then there is the extending button i'm just going to push it back out again just want to push it until it reaches the wall holding it for about five seconds once it reaches the wall this is your generator button. To start the generator, you want to make sure you hold down the stop button. This is going to prime that generator with the fluids that it needs to start. And then press and hold the start button. It'll flash at you, that's fine. Press and hold until you hear it turn over and the light stays solid. When you pick up the RV, you're going to see that the hours are here. We're going to write down these hours when you pick up and we're going to write the hours when you return. This is how we can keep track of how many generator hours you've used on the RV. Now it's important to note that the RV operates all the major appliances while you are in travel. So air conditioning, microwaves, televisions, and all the power outlets. Anytime that you're driving uh, and you want those things, this will need to be powered on. Okay. We're going to pan around over to the switches just below the kitchen and you've got here your your power this also has your solar uh, this unit does have solar on the roof you've got your extending and retracting of the jacks the stabilizers so pushing down makes them lower and pushing up makes them retract if the jacks are not fully up and you go to start the engine when you're when you're leaving it will alarm if you have those down. It's a little bit of a Mercedes safety feature. So if you hear that alarm, stop what you're doing. Make sure you bring the jacks all the way into the upright position. Okay. You also want to make sure that when you are setting up, you hook up your connections outside. And the first thing you do is drop the jacks, then slide out the RV. So you're going to come here first, drop the jacks, then over to the main panel. And that's where you'll slide out. Everything that you're doing uh, to set it up, you just want to work in reverse to close the RV back in. So when you're ready to leave, retract the slide, and then go ahead and raise these jacks. Next is your main power. You always want to keep this on. This is your main battery disconnect. We want to make sure it stays on all the time. These are going to be lights to the outside of the RV as well as the steps. And then right here, this rocker switch, this is for your awning. So uh, when I press that, it retracts the awning back in. If the engine's on, this button won't work. You won't be retracting in or out. GFCI protected outlets. And then you've got a small little, um, what is this, like a little extra cutting board space here at the side. If you want to put that back down, all you need to do is put your hands here and then drops down. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the batteries, which are just below us here. Miss Lauren's going to 
uh, kind of show you where these are. These are the house batteries to the RV. And on the left here, this is my left, you're right, this is the amount of battery charge that you have. These batteries are going to keep the refrigerator cool while in travel. They're also going to be for your lights and your water pump. Those things will still operate without the generator being on. They also will charge when you're at an RV park. So as you're plugged in, those batteries are gonna charge up. And when you're driving the coach, it will charge the batteries and fill them back up. So if any time you're boondocking and you're a little bit low, just start the engine up and let it charge up. Next, we're gonna talk about some of the safety features and where they're located. So we do have a fire extinguisher in each of our RVs, as well as above me, is a smoke detector and just below the dinette there is going to be a carbon monoxide detector oh, excuse me it's going to be right here it's going to be below our bed right there okay so this is the carbon monoxide detector uh, this is for the generator any exhaust um, if you have a propane leak of any kind or it detects something it's going to set off the alarm okay next we're going into the kitchen items we are fully stocked with all of your coffee makers. You've got toasters, lights here, there we go. Okay, and cleaning supplies, because we want you to clean everything before it returns back to us. These are all of your lights here. When the water pump is on, I'm not hooked up right now, but when the water pump is on, I'm gonna turn it on right now. I'll just be able to run, run the faucet. Put these on to give you a little bit more storage. You have your trash can underneath here. All of this is all your utensils. And for a list of everything that we have in the RVs, it'll be on the website as well as you can contact us for that. Cutting boards, baking dishes. This is a microwave as well as a small convection oven. So if you want to do cinnamon rolls, baked potatoes, things like that in the oven. This is a convection oven. Cooktop. This is going to be using your propane. Okay. Press and hold in where you see a flame for about 30 seconds. And then these do have a sparker to the left. Okay. So you'll just keep sparking until you see the flame. Okay. It's really important to after you fill the propane at a truck stop or if you've gotten low and you, you fill up you want to make sure that you come back into the coach and bleed out the lines, letting these run out like this for about 30 seconds. Okay, we don't want any air in the lines. That way, the refrigerator won't light because this refrigerator does require batteries and propane while you're in travel. This does have an auto feature here. We want to make sure we stay on auto. When you're driving, it knows to use the battery and propane. And when you're parked, it knows that it needs to switch into electric, making sure we don't overstuff these. Um, we want a lot of really good flow. These will come cold. Okay, so when you're picking up the RV, I'll show you some storage here. But when you pick up the RV, these will be cold, ready to use. Uh, you're ready to start your trip. We suggest that you don't turn off the refrigerator and that you make sure that the RV is always level. If your driveway happens to look like this, you wanna park out on the street, it will turn the fridge off, defrosting everything inside. So we really don't want that. Okay, it takes about eight hours for it to uh, get back to cold. So we wanna make sure we keep it cold. Okay, uh, next we're gonna focus on some of the breaker boxes and some of our outlets here. So this is the breaker box. If you're having any issues with the air conditioning, tripping, microwave, or your main power, this is where you're gonna check first. If nothing is tripped here, you're gonna go outside to the campground post. Make sure that you trip it off and then trip it back on, uh, making sure to reset it so that it, it may not be anything in the RV, it may actually be at the campground. So we wanna check that first, okay? You got some outlets right here, and then there's your detector. 
coming around, we're going to talk about the AC. Okay, so it's just it's right here. I have the generator running right now. So if I want to turn on this air conditioning panel, I select the power. And then I select the mode. So I've gone to cool and then I can adjust the temperature where I want it. Now, you never want to drop this extremely, extremely low <laughs> um, because they will freeze up. The best way to keep the camper cool is by dropping the blinds, okay? Stopping any sun from getting into the RV is crucial when it's 100 degrees outside, okay? So I'm going to let this AC just stay on. These are your lights for your master bedroom. This panel also controls the heat as well, so the furnace will be controlled from here. So as you can see, this bed is folded right now. And this is how it will stay when you're in travel. So before you slide in, you need to make sure you fold the bed. And when you get to where you're going, just pull and drop down and you have a queen size bed. Okay. There is outlets and USBs. And then you've got the uh, cigarette adapter here. This is for like a CPAP machine. You can go there. Okay, really nice. We're going to let Lauren get around here and she's going to show you the television here. We love the Mercedes. They do a great job with giving us two televisions, one in the master and then one in the front of the coach here. So two. Perfect. Okay. We've got all of your bedding here. We provide all the sheets and the towels, blankets uh, that fit all three of our beds well as all these are really nice drawers big space we recommend that you bring your clothes in and that you don't bring any hard luggage um, just kind of bring soft-sided luggage it really helps fit in a lot of these upper spaces above the bed here a little bit better okay we're gonna go into the bathroom Okay, and we're going to show you some storage here. This is your medicine cabinet. Okay, as well as some storage down below here. Now these are sprinters, okay? I'm not going to lie, they're really small. They're, they're a tiny bathroom. Um, but it, you get more living space. So what we recommend is, yes, we understand it's, it, I mean, look, I'm, I'm small and it's tight. But we recommend that you take your showers or go to the bathroom during the day at the campsite. And then this would be for, you know, at, at night in the case of emergency or first thing in the morning. But a lot of people go to those campsites to do that because it uh, gives you a little bit more room. Okay, I am 5'4 for reference and these ceilings are tall. I can't, I can't touch up there. <laughs> so this is great for someone who is six foot um, taking a shower in here. Okay, you've got adjusting the hot and the cold. And then up here, you've got the um, stopping the flow of water, okay? So let's say you get the temperature just right. You don't want to go through a lot of your um, water in your holding tank. This will stop it. You can wash your body. And then when you're ready to have the flow go back on, turn it on, rinse yourself off, okay? Next, we're going to talk about the hot water heater. It's really nice. This is an instant hot water heater to this RV. It is located in the bathroom. This is your power, okay? And then adjusting the temp up and down. I can say that a hot tub is like, I think it's like 110 for a hot tub. Oh. So, so anything, you know, any more than that is really hot. And we're gonna show you um, how it works. I'm gonna turn on the hot water. And when you turn on the hot water, you're gonna see some flow here. That means I have water going in to the, coming out of the spigot. I've got the fan producing the flow, and now when I see that igniter of propane, that means that I'm starting to heat up. You can see it's raising its temp real fast here. It takes about 30 seconds to get boiling water. As soon as I stop the flow, everything's going to shut off. Turn it off when you're not using it. Okay. Something really important about the instant hot water heaters. Okay is that if they do not have really strong flow, um, and that means from the park, let's just say a lot of people are taking showers at seven o'clock in the park, pressure just goes down, okay? 
you either want to use your water pump, which gives you the highest pressure, or temporarily remove the regulator um, so that you have flow. Because if you don't have a strong enough flow, these things are very picky and they will not kick on. So that could be your cause as to why you're not getting hot water in these uh, instant hot water heaters. Okay, let Lauren go inside here and she'll look at the uh, toilet and the fan just above. So this is your toilet. You have a foot pedal here. Uh, just pressing the foot pedal down for 30 seconds. Just press and hold. Let all the water flow in. Okay, we suggest that you hold down quite a bit. Let lots of water in there. This is where you'll fill the... Let me get this open here. This is where you'll stick extra water and maybe some soap uh, for when you're traveling to wash it. Okay. If you press and hold, it's going to allow flow to go down, but if you slightly hold on it, it'll allow it to slowly fill the bowl. Um, we recommend that you you fill this bowl before you go to the bathroom, <laughs> okay? Because they're, and the reason they don't have water sitting in the base is because it will slosh around and travel, okay? So that, that's why they don't do that. Okay. And just above is an exhaust, okay? So you... Make sure that you close these when you're done using them. When you let all the steam out, close them before you travel. This is your GFCI outlet. So make sure you press the reset if you don't have any power to any of your wet outlets, like your hair dryer, coffee makers. Um, that could be a cause as to why you're not seeing any power come out of those. Perfect. Now you can see this is a really <laughs> it's a really big space once it's all slid out. Uh, you get two additional sleeping spaces, one being right here. I like to even turn this into a day bed. <laughs> so if I don't have anybody staying here, this can, this can do dual purpose as a couch. Uh, to drop it down, what we're going to do is pull the lever here, and then we're just going to push down on it. And when we lift these cushions up, this will rest nicely on this ledge and then the back cushions here are going to get placed right on top and this provides a full-size bed for the extra sleeping space when you're done just lock it into place okay usb is here as well as some lights and then all this is extra storage we have an extra electric heater for if you're traveling during the winter space. all right the next spot is this upper cabin so you have a ladder here and this provides you with a queen bed We have sheets, and then this also has a really nice privacy curtain uh, right here. So if you want to, you have a privacy curtain across the, the front, as well as there's a privacy curtain, Lauren, uh, to the uh, master bedroom. So you can close off both sections just like this and make them both pretty private, um, you know, if it's two couples or someone likes to sleep in late. <laughs> now there are some some vents here as well so these are just excess vents if you want to exhaust stuff and then we've got the AC just above us here okay now for the strongest flow leaving this open if you want the flow to come out of these holes maybe you want to put it closer to this person or push it towards the master bedroom you're gonna want to close off this main dump okay cooling it down the fastest and then this way is pushing it towards the bedrooms. You also have one filter here. If you're gonna be in this RV for over a week, please make sure that you push this cover off, you wash off the filters, pat them dry, stick them back in. If we go to any places like Big Bend or Grand Canyon, somewhere that has a lot of dust, this will stop the compressor and, and have it not where it's cooling as much, okay? So we wanna, produce as much airflow as possible into the AC. I 
I really like this. This kind of goes up to you can you can lift this to give yourself more cab room too. So this doesn't have to be a bed per se. I've seen a lot of people put luggage up here, um, coolers. <laughs> I've even seen bikes go in here. So this this can really be anything you want it to be. I mean, this ceiling, Lauren, if you kind of yeah. So if you stand, like I said, five four here, I cannot touch the ceiling. I, I can't. I mean, I have to be on my tiptoes. So. This is the perfect RV for someone who's taller, um, but because this is a taller RV, be really careful. You're gonna catch tree scratches, okay? When you're making turns, be real careful. Um, the height as well, just kind of be mindful when you're driving, swing nice and wide. And remember, this is a very tall motor home, right? <laughs> what everybody wants to know about, TVs and Wi-Fi. <laughs> Um, because we are camping, but we're still human. Everybody wants to watch Netflix, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I was able to take the TV off the wall. It's on a swivel so it can go to the person in the upper bed. And you've got some connections here where you can connect all of your stuff. If you want to bring a fire stick, um, Apple TV or Playstations. I'm going to show you how to operate the digital antenna that's on the roof. There is a cable right here, and there's a little green light. And Lauren's going to show you that light. It's really important. Uh, when the light is on, that means that you are getting power from our antenna. If you do want to use the campsites and their cable, just turn that off. Make sure it's in the off position. Okay, so it's one or the other. So I'm going to be using mine that's on the roof. I'm going to press that in. And we're going to scan for some channels. I'm going to power on the TV. Give it a second here. So right now you can see it's a little fuzzy. Okay, I haven't scanned for the channels yet. I'm going to click to the menu. And I'm going to scroll all the way over. So the menu, menu button is right here in the center. And I'm going to scroll over to where it says channels. Okay, I'm going to click on channel. And if you go in, Lauren, you can kind of see here. They're going to, she's going to show you. Let me get to our menu again. There we go. All right, channels. If you want to do over the air, okay, which is what we are, or if you're hard connected, you're going to choose cable. For us today, we're going to do air, scroll down. And press start scanning this can take anywhere from two minutes to ten minutes just depending on the antenna okay so if you're in a remote location you may not be getting very good signal but if you are in a major city you're gonna pick up local channels and we suggest that you scan every time you get to a new city okay so while this is scanning we're gonna talk about Wi-Fi so Wi-Fi in the RV is going to come from the dash. And there is a little uh, code reader down below. Okay, and that is only active when the engine is on and the RV is in motion. Okay, so this is a T-Mobile signal. So if you don't have T-Mobile service, we're not going to get any Wi-Fi. So when the engine's off and you're at an RV park, please connect to their Wi-Fi and that way you'll be able to use one or the other. So this is for in travel only. So right now you can see, I'm not gonna let it scan all the way through, but I've already picked up, I'm only right here and I've already picked up 32 channels, okay? So I'm gonna stop the scan right now, but that's how you scan for each channel, okay? I'll put this back in its place and just locks in right there. Privacy curtain to the front cab looks just like this, has some Velcro on the bottom here. I'm gonna turn this over, there we go. So it has Velcro and it's going to stick to these points of contact. And there is, you put it around right here and flip these around. So that way those kind of hold it against the front, okay? And it'll wrap all the way around because both of these chairs, the one thing the Mercedes does is it allows you to turn both of the chairs around. So the curtain will be behind you and both chairs do swivel, okay? It's a little bit of a workout to get them to swivel, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but it, you can do it, I promise. But you've gotta, 
you know, you've got to maneuver them. So um, there is levers down below here. Let's see if I can get one. Okay. And one is going to go front to back. And the other one here, if I swivel it, it's going to go like this. So all I got to do, lock it back into place. Okay. And, and both seats can do that. Perfect. Next, we're going to drive the coach. So starting the engine, okay, so all, with these uh, diesels, you do need to hold and hold the start before they turn on, okay? Now you're going to hear alar uh, an alarm going off. This is the alarm that lets you know that your jacks are down. So I just want to let you hear what that sounds like. I am going to turn the engine off so that it doesn't keep beeping on us, but if you hear this, that way you know exactly what it is. I'm gonna press the stop button. You've got your fuel levels and your depth levels and your mileage right here. Perfect. Okay, you've got AC here and your hazards. Most important to know where those are. Okay, your radio. So you've got the power off and on and muting. So I'm going to mute him and I'm going to turn the battery off, right? So this, this has, this is connected to your battery of the car. And anytime you stop, you want to make sure you turn it off so it doesn't drain any battery. Okay, I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to go to the home button. Okay, home button. This allows me to connect my Bluetooth for my music over the phone, talking back to radio and to my rear view camera. So you can see if I'm towing a car, a bike rack, or anything else, I can really see really good visibility behind me. When I'm driving, I can select this feature just so I can see my blind spots a little bit better. When I'm done, I tap out of it. There is a small little tiny button right here. You just stick a pen right inside here. If for some reason your radio does happen to freeze on you because you left it on, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, stick a pen inside there, hold it for 10 seconds, and it'll reset the radio. Okay, so turn it off when you're done with it. Perfect. Right here we have our tire monitors. Okay, so this is what's connected to those six tires. There is a mute button in the back, that's the set button, and that's going to silence them if the alarm starts going off. So sometimes the alarm can go off um, when the pressures are showing a little bit higher, okay? It's a hot day today, okay? So they're gonna be a little bit warmer than normal. And that's okay if they go up just a smidge. If they start raising too high, you do wanna pull over and let some air out. We do have on the inside of the driver door where the, uh, what the pressures should be for this vehicle and they will be set before you leave. But after you drive for about an hour, they can raise up some storage right here as well as some outlets. Um, so this has a uh, cigarette adapter right there. Cup holders here. I mean, this, this thing has two cup holders here, um, more here, even more over there. I mean, this just has a lot of, uh, it's, it's really great front cab driving. Um, trying to think if there's anything else here. You've got your mirror adjustments mirror adjustments here and then you have all of your lights right here your parking brake on this motorhome is right here okay. so you're gonna pull up and this is gonna set the brake and you'll see here I have set the brake okay now to release you want to lift up and give it a good pull and then drop it back down okay Perfect. So, just trying to think if there's anything else, Lauren. Is there anything else we've missed on our uh, on our tour here? I think we've got. I believe we've got. I think we've got everything. So now we get to the point where we go over the stuff that um, our favorite features of the RV. It's something we do in all of the coaches, just so that people know, because we we're in them every day. So we really know what we love about these so i'm gonna let uh i'm gonna let lauren go first <laughs> so my favorite thing about
about this RV is honestly the size of the living room and the height. It, it feels very spacious and you have a lot of room to be able to do uh, say game night at your table or just be able to relax and enjoy the RV. Yeah. You don't feel so cramped. Yeah, the, the added slide out adds more room for pets. If you are bringing a dog, you know, that gives you some more room. Um, and like I said, this, when it goes up, you'll lift like this, and then you'll slide in the coach. But it really gives you a lot of moving around space if you were to bring an animal. This gives you more room. Uh, so I will say, yeah, my favorite feature about this thing is that it's Mercedes. <laughs> it does. It drives great. Um, the way that the steering wheel, the way it handles um gas versus diesel you're going to notice a lot more power so driving up a mountain if this is a trip that's going to colorado this rv is perfect for that um so knowing if your trip has a lot of hills that's important and it handles well and you'll just you know find that there's a lot of power to this coach and it makes it easy for someone who's never done a motorhome before um to handle because people are a little nervous the first time um, but yeah, I, we hope you enjoy it and we look forward to seeing you pick up.